Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meet Hook Jim here, the Wrestle Horror Podcast. With me, as always, my co host, Donnie Hoover. Donnie, it's Saturday. It's supposed to rain. What's going on with you? Yeah, it's supposed to, but it's sunny so far, so I'm going to try to get out there and get in my mankini and get in the pool a little bit, I think. <laughs> I've seen the mankini. It scares me. <laughs> and joining us today is a, a guest we've had on before, and it's Mike Newsom. He's a home haunter, a haunter, a wrestling fan, uh, just a little bit of everything like wrestle horror. Welcome to the show again, Mike. Hello. Thanks. 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 Yeah, Let's Mike. On. Yeah, Mike's actually a bigger part of everything than people realize. You know, we've had him on before where we talked about character development and that kind of thing. Right. And uh, you know, but yeah, he also helps just like you're the ring announcer for New Ohio. Mike's coming on as a as a ring crew and a, and a you know stage setup kind of guy, and he's going to be behind the scenes like I am and and helping out. And uh, he helped get Big Dirty ready, so we got her ready to go. And uh, so yeah, and the camo netting that's in my podcast studio is thanks to mike newsom so you know he's a bigger part of the show than people realize <laughs> yeah. and if anybody's heard us talk about big dirty in the past mike has also been a victim of big dirty oh yeah as well as donnie Broke my little finger yeah Broke my little finger that finger <laughs> If she's mean that's she... a one finger salute for big dirty there <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we're here to talk about a little more haunting than wrestling this time around. We're gonna we're gonna cover the area of home haunts, uh, and 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 home haunts just vary from person to person, from taste to taste, and I think in some ways they're a lot more unique than some of the bigger established haunts, because you know home haunters can do a little bit more without legal repercussions. And uh, I know Mike has done a haunt several several years at his home. Uh, Mike, uh, what kind of haunt do you do usually? Um, it started off with the whole black plastic and the PVC pipe. I used to like dig holes in the ground, and that's how I keep my PVC pipe in. And good old duct tape and zip ties. We uh, zip tie that black plastic up to the PVC pipe, and then that's how we made our walls and our ceiling. And um, at first, it was just one of those things that I just wanted to walk through. I just want to jump out and scare people. And at first, that's all it was. It was just, I had like a couple of actors and we just dress up as random characters. And here and there, when people come through, we just jump out of the plastic. And that's how we we did that at first. And then at the end there, um, I was getting tired of the wind and the rain and all the weather problems with the black plastic because it, it always rips the plastic completely off the roof or it just rips it completely right. and we always had a lot of problems with that and so here, here we are trying to scare people and next minute the roof's coming apart like oh god look at that <laughs> well, that scares somebody for sure yeah <laughs> yeah actually I, I got on video of that happening it's <laughs> it's so it's, it's crazy and it just i was getting tired of the, the weather issues and so and i was doing this back in high school and I didn't have that money or anything to really do what I really want to do, like like get with, like walls and stuff like that. I so I just had to just use what I had, and sometimes it was sheets. At first, sometimes um, I used a dog cage that we had, and I used that at first. Um, so at first, I just use what I can, and then over time, it just grew. And then when I finally started, got my first job, um, I went with the black plastic and turn into the walls you know I, I made the four feet by eight feet walls and then from that point on um since i've been doing this for a while and i have some background on some you know designing already because i have terror park i used to be the designer for terror park for a minute there so me doing that i had a little bit some some background a little bit on how to work with some of the stuff already so and then over the years it just grew and then there have been times where like hey I got this idea for this scene. Um, I went insane solemn. And so I just wing it and come up with some, my ideas and 
sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work at all. So, but no matter what, it, it always became a good success. So. Well, haunters are definitely a creative bunch. We have to be because we don't make any money or not much money doing no, it. So, no. you know, whatever works to get the job done is really the way we look at things. Yeah. Um, actually, when I was back in school, what, how I made my money was to do this was I saved my lunch money. Okay. Um, um, I got $2 a day and instead of me eating lunch, I saved that $2 and I saved it for the whole month. And that's how I was getting my first props. That's how I was getting some of these little Halloween stuff. I used to go to Walmart or Kroger's and I buy all kinds of props and stuff and lights. And, and that's how I started off with first. And when I got my job, my first two paychecks went on nothing but Halloween stuff. And then that year, you could tell that year I had a job because it went from this small little like lights and decoration stuff to like way bigger stuff, like bigger props. Now I got the house covered in black plastic. Um, Cause my goal was to make the house not even there no more. I want to make it look like the house is invisible. And so that's what I did. So I took the whole house up with black plastic and had that little eerie feel. So you won't see the house no more. And then I just, decorate everything around it so it worked out and but yeah money was always an issue at first yeah that's a, that's how i actually got started in the in the haunting is through mike's home haunt because like i said i've known mike since he was born you know I've, I've known his family for many years and uh i was just driving home from work one day and i'd, I'd been to like scaratorium and haunt in terror park and i went through the haunts you know to support them and all that and i enjoyed it but I was driving home from work one day and I can't remember if Mike called me or his uh, uncle Frank called me and, but somebody called me or maybe it was Tom, but somebody, somebody called me and said, uh, you know, Hey, do you want to work in a haunted house or work Mike's haunted house tonight? And I was like, what do I do? And they're like, well, we'll just have you do a butcher scene. You know, you act like a butcher. And, and I was like, oh, okay. And they was like, we'll have beer there. And I'm like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> so, so, you know, so, yeah, you're going to be in a haunted house drinking beer, <laughs> drinking beer with a bunch of your buddies, you know, hell yeah, count yeah, me in. It, yeah, of course, it, it was a house haunt, so yeah. everything goes. Yeah, no, no <laughs> rules. Well, I mean, we didn't get carried away with it. Oh. We just, did it to, you know, to get ourselves loosened up, especially me, because yeah. I'm not big on acting, so I was kind of nervous. You know, the only acting yeah. I'd done is wrestling type of stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah so I went there and and uh, got in there, and then actually Frank was was uh, in the room with me, you know, for the seasons that I worked there, and I had an absolute blast, and that's kind of what got my flame started on haunting. They're like, man, I want to do this, and, uh, you know, I think I worked Mike's home haunt with probably – four five six years maybe yeah and we did we took it to the south high drive-in movie theater yeah. one year and that was that was a challenge but that was a blast it was yeah. fun too yeah it got so big at my house i couldn't do it at my house no more and plus i was gonna hit all these fire codes and and this is when all the fire codes became a big thing big big thing and on top of that i had to get like a porridge on all this stuff and it was gonna cost me a, a, a mitt and i was like okay i can't do it at my house no more and I had to find a new spot for it. And at this point, I was like, might as well go big or go home. And I hit up on – there was um, – South End Drive-Ins right, is right down the street for me. And I always thought it would be a good idea to team up with them. So it would be like a haunted house, and you can watch horror films at the same time. And, and I, I thought that was always a cool idea. And have my some of my actors walk around the, the cars as the, the characters that's what, what's ever on the film. And I think I they they was playing Nightmare uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween, and I had actors walk around with claws all over their faces around the cars, and I was supposed to have a Michael Myers walking around, but the actor gave up and left, so I didn't have a Michael Myers walking around when the <laughs> Halloween movie came on. But it was a really cool, cool experience for me for sure, and that was that was really huge, huge, big thing for me when that happened. Yep. And uh, it was a good year. Cap. Yeah, it was a good year. It was a, it was a, the weekend went perfectly, and we the first night it rained. It rained so hard the first night, mm -hmm. and we still got a crowd. We still it. I think the very first time, the first night, I think we had three three hundred something people, mm -hmm. which was fantastic for the first time. And and um and but the drivings was helping out with that because throughout August I think it was I made our commercial. And they played our commercial throughout the whole August, before the movie, in the middle of the movies, 
and at the end of the movies. So they help us promote it. So it, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. But um, and then things happened with the monies, and we had. We, we, uh, I'm trying to say this without being like. Um, we we didn't have a fallout. It just we had a problem with money situations. Um, they want me to pay more money on certain things, and I was like, ah, this is your guys is doing. You should be paying for this, and I'm bringing this in. So it just we had a little fallout, but it was it was a great experience, no matter what. So oh, yeah, I had a blast, and yeah, like what he's talking about with the his his uh, house. I mean, we would have kids and parents lined up all the way down the sidewalk, like like houses down the road yeah like a block down just waiting to get in and people that didn't even go you know like live in that neighborhood were driving there just to go yeah. through mike's haunt and mm -hmm. it was called the apocalypse so i mean it got overcrowded to where it drew the attention of news we had news channels there that had uh interviewed them and and mike and, and a couple of his other actors would go to the tv studios and scare the news anchors and stuff on halloween and all that and uh so yeah it got it got kind of bigger than the yard he had to work with you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and at the end there the storage unit was insane with the money um i was paying 300 bucks a month on my storage unit and i was doing that for four years and it got to the point where i'm like i can't keep on doing this i gotta find find a find a location or a spot for this and then then i sold it <laughs> and all the while still working at scaratorium and terror park and all those other places <laughs> yep yep <laughs> but it's funny because somehow when i sold it all I, we somehow got it all back at the end there so it was it's weird how that <laughs> happened <laughs> yeah. it's like full circle huh? yeah so <laughs> You know, I got to say that the, the, the drive-in theater concept, I always thought was a neat idea. Um, I had tossed around once because there's a drive-in theater not too far from me um, called the Holiday Auto Theater. And I, I just thought it would be neat to, to have actors out there amongst the cars during a horror film. I just thought it would be oh, yeah. cool. Now, get this. Uh, this past year, um, they tried to do it again, but without me. Uh -huh. And they, they were just trying to do the horror films, and I guess they didn't do as well as when the actual haunted house was there. And um, so it, they tried it without the haunted house, but I guess it really didn't work as well. And people were saying, "Where where was the haunted house at?" Because I actually ran into the manager um, the couple months ago, actually, and he told me like, "Hey, to let you know, people was asking where your haunted house was at this past year, and um, maybe we we can work something out again." I'm like, "We see." We see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the cool thing about it is, like, during intermissions and in between movies, that's when everybody would get out of their cars and right. line up in the haunt. So, we like, as soon as it come to the end of the movie, we were like, "All right, we're about to get, you know, bum rushed with a bunch of people. <laughs> it's going to get, yeah. it's going to get crazy for a half an hour." And then, oh, yeah. yeah, then when the movie started, they kind of start thinning out, so they'd go back and watch their movies. But yeah, I mean, it was a great concept and a great idea, a lot of and, fun. And just not that when we went to drive-ins. I completely changed my whole tire hunt around. The whole maze, everything wasn't the same no more. Um, so that took a lot of lot of money and time and stress. And because I, if it, when I went to South End Drive-ins, I didn't want it to be like it was at the house at all. Like to me, this was a new chapter. So I might as well change everything up. And I wanted to go way way more hardcore on it and put more things in it that no one else had never seen before. And so I, I did this whole 180 with this haunted house and we made it work somehow. And the first weekend, it was a huge, huge success. And it was a great feeling. It was a really great feeling actually. So. Very cool. Yeah, I know with, with my butcher scene, so to speak, in the home haunt, it was like near the end. It was probably maybe two or three scenes towards the exit. And then on the drive-in haunt, we switched it around or Mike switched it around to where my butcher scene was the very first thing. Yeah. And they made, they made like a big uh, oven, like a cremating oven 
with plexiglass on the bottom and people had to literally crawl through to get into the haunt and when they crawled through it was my butcher room and it was covered in blood and mike had some uh, some girls volunteers uh, uh with the bloody messy girls i believe they were and they were like all bloody they were my victims so they were all bloody and torn up and and uh, so when people crawl out of that oven you know there's just like a bloody mess and people screaming so <laughs> and why they were yeah and then me with the chainsaw so we kind of like as soon as they started through they were you know people were like oh this you know this crap's for real <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah they're starting off big you know so it was kind of fun it was really fun yep. and that's that's actually why i call it apocalypse because if you have killer clowns a sandy axe all these weird crazy monsters walking around and like all hell's breaking loose so it has to be the pockets it's in the world so that's how i came up with the name is because i have all these different themes in my haunt and i was like okay if all this is actually happening it's got to be end of the world so that's how i one of the, one of the reasons how i came up with the name with apocalypse also so so let me ask you this mike um how young were you when you started doing this i don't think we covered that part um no um and two, my man, it, it's it, it goes all the way back in the day when I was chicken treating. Um, there was a house around the corner that did the whole setup and yard design, and um, he, the guy, used to dress up as Jason Voorhees. And I remember as a kid, I was so scared because this guy went all out. Like he had the tombstones, he had his props, he had his lights. And early nineties, this right. was awesome to see him. <laughs> and and just at that he and he, he had a chainsaw and when you get go you know drive the go up the driveway to get your candy, he's he changed it with the chainsaw and really out of all my years, I only been up to that driveway two times, because it was I, I was so scared but I remember watching it across the street, and 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 and, and I remember one of the times I went up there one of the, well, two times I went up there, um he got me and I remember I dropped my candy and I ran so hard and I ran the street and no one could stop me. I, I was running, I was running and no one could stop me. I was running back home. <laughs> and, and I, I remember I got home and I was in tears, but everyone was laughing and everything. And then later on that night, um, I went back to the house and it was the same guy, but he, he was out of costume and just seeing that, and I, I remember I had that hockey mask, the Jason hockey, hockey mask in my hand, just looking at that, and just right there, it was, I think that's what done it. I was like, I want to do this. Because seeing how, how fun they was having with it, and how, how, how you know, they was making people laugh about it, I was like, I want to do that. So I think that was like, like the, the thing that got me, it was when, when I first started seeing that right there with the house. And then growing up, of course, there was horror films I grew up into. Um, my family used to go to this um, haunted forest um, every year. And me going through all this stuff, I was seeing all this stuff. And I was like, man, I want to do that. I want to join this. And I, I was just too scared. There was a, um, there was a chance I could have worked at, at this haunted forest at like age 12. But I was too scared to do it. So, yeah. So I knew over, the, over, over time, my, my scare would be like, I won't be scared with no more so i would definitely will hopefully do this one of these days and then um my then i think it was like 15 14 with my trick-or-treating and i was i was getting tired of it It was getting boring and i remember going through certain houses and i was seeing besides the the main guy's house there's other houses i was doing the same thing but they was just standing still when you go to get your candy they jump at you kind of thing Mm -hmm. and just doing that i i like that and i was like man i want to do that so I, I knew my last year trick or treating the year before I me, mean, year after that, I will be doing the same thing. I had a plan. I was like, this is my last year trick or treating year. Next year, I'm definitely be passing out the candy and I'm going to be dressing up and I want to scare people. And so that's what happened. And I remember the year after I, I got this cheap mask, cheap black robe. And, um, I, I think I got out one more somewhere and it was a last minute thing. I went out there and it that's when the magic happened. Like I remember scaring so many people and that feeling was then that feeling was so great. Like every time I that scare it is just that feeling inside was just like happiness. And and just and seeing everybody laugh about it, I was like, I think I made made this. I, I think I'm made for this right here. I think this is this is me. Like and I had so much fun with it. 
in the three hours of trick or treating, it seemed like it was only like 20 minutes. And I was like, no, like I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it, it, and I think that's when I got that bug is the year out there my trick or treating and those scares was, was pretty good. And then from that point on, that's done it. Like I, I, I got more people involved, my cousins. And then, um, one thing led to another, I was having like six actors and it was just a yard hot at that point, but we turned the driveway into like a little path area. And, um, pretty much what we did was I bought two, uh, two, $200 worth of candy bars and there's a big Hershey candy bars and it was like buff for each one, but I didn't care. I want people to come. So what I did was I, I took the candy bars and put them all in the back of the driveway. So you have to go through all these actors to get to your candy bar. So, and then I was at the back with the chainsaw, asked Jason, um, because like I said, the house down, down the corner for me, it, it expired me. So I want to do that. So for all these years, I was at Jason with the chainsaw now. And I, I found out recently that the guy down the, down the house I guess he's sick and he hasn't been doing it for years. And um, so for me doing this, like people was like, you know, this is a new house now. This is, you know, this guy's getting sick and now everyone's going to do this, this new guys now. So right. it was, it was really cool. And then when they was finding out that I was giving away big Hershey candy bars, <laughs> it was, it was insane. And then that was the house that gave away the big Hershey candy bars and, it was it, then the word got out really fast, and the year after is when we start getting more and more people in. So that's how I kind of start getting more people in. I was kind of giving them better treats, <laughs> bribe them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. You know, uh, I started scaring my mother at the age of four, <laughs> and it was nothing more than you know, just I, I just got tickled to watch mom jump. Mm -hmm. Um. And then finally, at the age of eight, you know, and I love trick or treating as a kid. You know, what kid doesn't? Um, but you know, I was in that superhero phase at the time, and um, I know at the age of eight, my parents took me to Disney World, and for the first time, I rode the Haunted Mansion. Oh my God, <laughs> that was it! I fell in love. I even did a after I went on that trip. I was in third grade, and I did a. I did a, a paper on the Haunted Mansion for one of my third grade projects about what I saw and what I liked and things like that. Of course, I didn't know how to spell mansion back then, but I figured it out. <laughs> um, and then the funny thing is, is as I got older, you know, when I started, you know, the, I made my own Spider-Man costume at one point in time. I made my own Frankenstein costume. Uh, I did, I made my own Gene Simmons costume um, using zinc oxide for the clown white. Uh, but uh, I could not watch a horror movie at all. They'd scare me too bad. I, I couldn't, could not watch a horror movie. I tried and every time I did. Yeah. And this went on until I was 18. You know, couldn't do it. I wouldn't even go see Rocky Horror because of the horror in it. So, probably in my late teens, I did my first home display. Yeah, Mid-teens. I think it was like 14 or 15. It was my first home display. Um, but I still loved the whole vampire, ghost thing, bats. So, I set up a display. And if we had a, a decent-sized yard, so I set up a display... We had a we had a driveway that kind of curved around and went from we were on a corner lot on an S curve, and it just kind of hooked around from one side to the other. So I used that as kind of a pathway up to the front porch, and I even rigged up. I, I was still proud of myself because you can't see fishing line at night. So I had rigged up a, a flying ghost that I could control. Um, which I would wait for people to get to a certain point and then I, and I had it waited so I would let it go and this ghost would chase them up towards the porch. Uh, and it, it was things like that and then I would sit there and wait for them 
I did a lot of stuff by myself back then. I didn't have a lot of my friends weren't into it like I was. Uh, and, you know, kids, the younger kids would come up and gra- try to grab the candy out of the bowl. And, of course, I'd jump at them or something like that. But uh, one of my favorite things, I was actually, God, I was in my 30s uh, living in Florida. And my next door neighbors uh, came out for, I mean, we're talking the whole family was out trick or treating. And I had this display set up in, on my driveway as I, I normally did. And I had costumed myself to where I completely looked like was nothing but a stuffed dummy. And I had the bloody, I had a, one of those bleeding skull masks and, and gloves and, and, you know, tied the pants around my ankles and, you know, stuck newspaper out, made it look like I was obviously a dummy with the bowl of uh, with the, the bowl of candy there. And I got real good when people would get close. I got real good at holding my breath. So for all intents and purposes, I'm not human. Well, this, this family comes up and, and it's the, it's two little kids and the grandmother and the two little kids, they reach in and they take a couple of pieces of candy and I don't do anything. Well, Grandma tried to get a little greedy. So she goes and grabs a couple of, grabs a handful of the candy. And I reached out at her. She dropped the candy, screamed, and ran. Got across the street. I'm sitting there to myself. I'm just giggling my ass off at this point. So once she realized what was going on, she started laughing. She goes, I've got to go get my son. Now, and this is the parents of the two grandkids. So he gets his son, she gets her son and her daughter-in-law to come over. So here I am again, she's going, come here, come here, check this out. This is really cool. And I'm holding my breath and they're real hesitant and I'm running out of air. And they, they're getting close, but not close enough. And I'm going to blow this, I'm going to blow the scare if they don't do something soon. So finally, they got within like three feet of me, and I said, screw it, and I just jumped up. I've never seen people move that fast in my life. <laughs> the, the, the son was gone. He was leaving his wife to, to the monster. <laughs> hey, fend for yourself at that point. <laughs> yep. Yep. Run! <laughs> yeah. That's right. The slowest one's dead, so... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I get it. You know, I mean, like I said, I didn't do a lot. I only worked with a couple of people at the most on my aunts, yeah. but, um, it takes time. It takes money and it takes passion. Oh yeah. Very, yeah. That passion is definitely number one because no matter what you'd be spending all your money and you'd be dealing with all this weather problems also. Yeah. And there, I mean, there's been times where I'm going to quit. There's been times where, like I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. And, but I'm telling you, like when it finally happens, when, when the time it's this time, like the, it's, it's action time. It's, and after that night ends, you see the faces on people, you see the smiles and you see the scares. And then, and just not that, that the whole neighborhood talks about you for weeks. Right. And it's just that what you mostly changed my mind all the time, because like, there's been times where I'm working on it as soon we're opening up. Like there's been times where we open up late cause I'm not done with it yet. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, it's just always problems. It's always something always happens. Or right when we about to open up the, the electric blows out or something happens, something breaks and I'm like, Oh my gosh, well, hold them off for another 20 minutes. <laughs> and it, was, it, was, it was always something. And it just, but I, I really don't think they cared. And just seeing their faces at the end was really mind blowing to me actually and it, i think that's what kept me going yeah that's, i know you i know you ran through some issues for the the home on in your backyard but i know in particular the south high drive-in was almost your breaking point because yeah. we were having trouble getting people to come help us and oh, yeah, it, was, it was just not going right and he was like frustrated to where he wanted to quit but as soon as that weekend was over he was like on cloud nine ready to do it again you know yeah. oh yeah because yeah that was that was experience because 
it was mostly just three of us. And Donnie was one. And it was just – when I was getting told, like, all right, we, we're coming to help, they don't ever show up. So it just – that's that's what you get for having, you know, volunteers. You know, they're not getting paid, so you can't blame them. Sure. Right. And, and just – but it, it, it sucked. But you do what you got to do, I guess, to do what you love. So that's where the passion part comes in, where you just yeah. keep going and make it happen no matter yeah. what. Yeah, the driving's. I was I was stressed. Driving was was <laughs> done it for me. <laughs> like, and then at that, but at the end there, it just that feeling was just great feeling. I was, and then when I got the cash in my hands, I'm like, oof, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm ready. All right. to do it again. <laughs> yep, yep. It was good times. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, the first time, you know, the first time I did it, quote unquote, professionally, and I. I use that term very loosely, and it just states that I actually got paid to do it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> oh, no, no, that's uh, good. Yeah, that was actually the first time I actually got paid. And But there was, like I said, there's all these fire codes and all that bull crap that you have to go through and all that. And um, after, I, after the first time I got paid, you know, I was like, I made it. This is it. But, yeah, next year they wasn't having it. And like I said, we had a little fallout and I sold the hot, but it, it's always come down to that money part. It just, right. it takes a good about three years to even break even. And, and just, you will lose and lose, and lose, but sooner or later, like it, you, you, you will get what you need and you break even and start making money. But till that point happens, you just have to keep with it. Right. Right. Um, unfortunately where I live now here in, in Hamilton, uh, I really don't have the space to do what I used to do down in Florida. Um, I put up a little display that I, I mean, it was, I had a few tombstones and some, some creature poppers and things like that. But um, that's when uh, I started, I found out about ha haunt at Kings Island. Um, so like in 2007, I, was doing my yard display and in 2008 I went over to Kings Island because you know what I, I missed scaring people you know I I hadn't done it in a couple three years and I missed it so I went to I went and applied over Kings Island and uh, immediately I took on a I wasn't hired as anything but an actor but I kind of I kind of took on a, a leadership role and supported some of the young kids that had um, been hired on in, in the haunt I was working but it was that first night you know I got in there and I refused to take a break almost the entire season because I didn't want to miss a scare but that first night when I got done and I know people screamed and hopefully someone pissed or shit I thought to myself does it get any better than this I get to scare people and I get paid for it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but that was never my intent. Like after, you know, after my stint there and my stint at the Dent Schoolhouse, uh, along, you know, with my, my actor training company, uh, and when I went off and, and formed them all with Jason Henry, when we originally formed them all, we had no anticipation or expectation of getting paid we just wanted to go places where we could scare help people out and scare people and that's when the big client fell on my lap and it's like I giggled again because I'm getting paid and I'm getting paid better than I did when I was working at the other places mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it all just kind of fell in place Again, I didn't expect, I mean, I, Kings Island, yeah, I expected it because I signed, you know, I filled out the paperwork. I knew I was going to get paid. Um, but it was fun. And, and with them all, that was unexpected. And, and, and it was a pleasant surprise, but I had no expectation. I just wanted to have fun and scare people. I mean, I gave up making, um, I, I made a decent paycheck at Dent. And, and I gave that up because creative freedom was getting a little stifled and I didn't like it. 
So that's when I decided to go off on my own. And that's, it's about, that's where the passion comes in. It's not, it's never been about the money and the money helps, but it's never really been about the money. It's been about having fun, entertaining people, scaring the shit out of people. And it's a great stress reliever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now on the the home haunt front, I mean, we've, we've talked about money being a big issue um, to where, you know, it would be, you know, good for people to get as creative as possible to either create props as cheap as they can right. or find, yeah. find cheap props. Uh, we, we touched briefly on like fire code and stuff for, for home haunts. Um, do you guys know like a little more about that? And is there a, a big, cause I know like a professional haunt, it's ridiculous. The codes that they got to go, you know, follow um, and meet, but is there a different like home haunts? Are they a little more lenient? Um, I would say just call your fire department just find out from them that's what i did and they told me what i had to do and stuff and who i had to call and and i, I was seeing more and more money come out of my pocket i'm like well i can't do this this year then so right well yeah, that's, some that's, of the things they told you to do or um you had to have in place well like with electric like um well exit exits had to be certain feet and they're and not just certain feet but there's got to be certain like you gotta have the exit signs, and they gotta light up, and they gotta be away from the other, like uh, like have another breaker just for the exit signs. Um, you no dead ends with door knobs. I do remember that, and I I remember they're saying something about if you have a dead end, it can't be more than four feet. Um, if this is if you have the walls and stuff, mm-hmm. and um, everything has to get flame returned. Um, I mean they like they 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 was like striking us at the driving like, about all this yeah. and that's actually and, but <laughs> i will say this but i the way how we did the drive we, we barely got past but the second weekend when we agreed to do it the second weekend it stormed and rained and all kinds of stuff and the fire marshal wasn't having it the second weekend um we barely got by the first weekend and but um yeah, I would say call your fire department and fire marshals and bring them down and talk to them, have a meeting, and they will tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, now, was and that it, the same as with the stuff in the backyard, or did you even bother with fire marshal for backyard stuff? No. By the point where I was about to do the backyard stuff, um, I didn't want to deal with it because that's when I was like, if I deal with this stuff, might as well go big, and that's where the drive-ins came from. And so at the, at, I, I didn't really deal with it, and but I kind of knew um, – because I at the backyard it was black plastic at first, and yeah. I, I I don't think that you know they would be too strict on just plastic hanging around. Um, but when I did the walls, I knew that my time was limited. Because I'm I'm being serious. The first time I did the walls, I barely had the exit doors. I did have no exit signs. Um, well, I had our active doors, so there, there there was like exit ways, but there was no signs to exit or anything because I didn't know at that point. And then um, going into it, I was reading up more into it, and that's when I started getting the glow in the dark exit signs because I got told if you has a glow in the dark exit signs, they will look the other way also. Um, but before I even used those, that's when we went to drive-ins, and um, that's when I well actually I did use the glow in the dark ones at the drive-ins, and I got told it was okay. But it just I I guess it depends what city you're at because I got I got told certain areas your fire marshal might be more stricter than the others. So. Yeah, so it's just a pull of the dice on who you get. Yeah, but, yeah, they they definitely – you definitely want to make sure you call your fire marshal. There's all kinds of fire codes they will mm-hmm. lit, light you up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was definitely going to say it, it varies greatly from municipality to municipality mm-hmm. uh, because I know some home haunters that don't have any issues at all. Um, but that being said, when you're enclosing areas – the fire marshal has to get involved. Mm-hmm. Smoke um, systems and everything. Right. If you've got a roof, you've got all kinds of issues. Yep. You've got to have fire suppression, um, sprinkler, you know, sprinklers are, hay- well, not halon, but sprinklers, um, you know, alarms and stuff. It, but if you're doing stuff in a backyard, like Mike said, it's a different animal. I right. mean, it's not going to be they're not going to be as strict in most cases because uh, I've known people that have done backyard haunts um, 
that have not had any issues with fire marshals until they got to it. And but I know one guy who's got too big, and then the fire department stepped in. Um, so you know, it, my, Mike's advice is best. You know, check with your fire marshal, especially if you're doing something in a building. Oh yeah. <laughs> Make sure you be yeah, because if if you're inside a building, you might be changing a lot more things than you think. You might be right. getting inside of your walls to change your electric and all kinds of stuff. Like it yeah. is crazy what they look at on some of these places. Yeah, and they don't mess around with that stuff, mm -hmm. and 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 that goes for the pros too. I mean, mm -hmm. um, one time when I was working at Dent, they had to one section one thing did not pass code on opening night. And they had to bypass that entirely and let, to be allowed to open until they could fix it, yep. which cut out about a quarter of the haunt. <laughs> yep. yeah, I know you mentioned the uh, sprinkler systems in the home haunts, and all I can all I can picture is like the garden hose with the yard sprinkler <laughs> going <laughs> swishing back and forth. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I should have done that. I'm like, I got sprinkler systems right here. Right? Turn the water hose on. <laughs> well, that's what popped into my head, and I got a chuckle out of it. I know that's not what you meant, but that's what I envisioned. <laughs> no, I, I, then that's fine, you know. Um, <laughs> what, what else? I mean, home haunts are, are unique animals unto themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people do stuff in their driveways yeah. i've seen walls put up with no roof the roof is big here i mean with no roof you got a lot more to play with but if you enclose that top the fire marshal is going to get really oh yeah hard. oh yeah um uh, there and there's ways around that uh one way one thing is camo netting yep that's that's why I said that when when if I ever bring this back, it's gonna be nothing but camo netting. Right. So because I, I really don't want to deal with the fire marshals right now or anything. So I was thinking if I make my own path with camo netting, outside it should be no problem really. Right. So. Absolutely. Um, and as far as uh, I would recommend, uh, and I think Mike could back me up on this. If you are a home haunter that's going to do a display using walls, not necessarily a roof, but using solid walls, uh, definitely paint them with flame retardant paint. Yeah, yeah, um, it's pricey. They're it pricey, is. but it's it's worth it. It's it's not as pricey as if the fire marshal drops a fine on you. A couple thousand, right? <laughs> it, it's expensive but in the long run it's a one-time investment if you if you store your walls you paint them you might have to repaint them what once every five years mike yeah yeah that's about right um so it, it's worth the extra investment to keep the fire marshal off your ass mm -hmm. and it's good to just have the gallon right there too when he shows up so you can see it like yeah i'm, I'm going by the codes have it strategically placed on the table right there. Oh, where did that come from? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> um, like, it's empty. I'm not going to go that way right now since you're here. <laughs> so, Mike, do you use a lot of fog machines in your house? Oh, yeah. um, I did. I had my whole front yard covered because my front yard was our cemetery area, mm -hmm. and we had uh, fog out there, and – we had fog in the maze in the back in the backyard in some spots, but not as many because that the fog will go through like every scene there is pretty much inside the maze. So I had I had maybe like I think three fog machines, one outside the front yard, and I had one in the big scene in the back. And the clown I think had one, had one of the clowns. I think that that was it. Um, but yeah, it's just. At that time, they were just regular fog machines, and you know, of course, the actors had to hit the button. But right. it was cool. But I, I, I like them better out front, to you know, with the graveyard. It, it just it feel really awesome with the with fog and with everything. Because I, I had that low laying, uh, low low laying ground fog. Yeah, and it was it was awesome. It worked I, perfectly. I was going to ask because I love a low lying ground fog in a cemetery. Yep. It just yep. it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Um. 
and you know, for, for people that are just starting out to do this home haunting wise, you don't have to, I mean, if you've got the money and you want to invest in a really nice fog machine, uh, I'm going to throw a shameless plug out to Froggy's Fog. Oh, yeah. Sure. But yeah. if and you it, don't have the coin, Spirit Halloween Fog Machines will work, too. Oh, yeah. And Foggy's Fog, they don't kill you. Like, you can breathe it in, and you don't right. feel like you're going to die like some of the fog juice out there. Absolutely. And you can even get scented fog. Yeah. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, I thought that was really neat at Transworld a few years back with that scented fog. But, uh, yeah, um, if you're using fog machines, those, those are things to consider. Um, oh, yeah. They've got the pro models. But, like I said, if you're just starting out and experimenting, um, what is it, a $49 fog machine at Spirit Halloween? Yep. Something like that will we'll get the job done until you can save up for a better one. Oh, yeah. Yep. Foggy Fog's the best way to go with that, for sure. Yes. I'll tell everybody. Best fog juice out there. Mm-hmm. So. Far none. <laughs> and they've been, and during this whole COVID thing, they've been making a, uh, uh, what, a sanitizer disbursement sanitizer. system. Mm-hmm. That's um, awesome. So they're staying busy and, and they're, they're helping out the communities and, um, and still staying productive. You know, it's uh, my hats off to, to, to Tater and uh, the other, all the guys at, at Froggy's Fog. Um, uh-huh. Great company, great uh-huh. fog juice. And not only that, but geez, this is coming into becoming an ad for Froggy's. <laughs> I'm going to charge you guys for this. All right. <laughs> We're looking for sponsors for the show. <laughs> <laughs> you can also get um, scents that you can use not only in your fog machine, but um, if you if you want to make your characters or, or sets smell a certain way, you you know you can get burnt flesh and um, swamp and uh, even the haunted house scent. Stuff's very powerful. Use it oh, yeah. sparingly. Mm-hmm. And that would make a huge impression on a home haunt because people don't expect a lot from a home haunt. And I guarantee if you use like a little scent here and a little scent there that they'll yeah. talk about it. Oh, yeah. Smell yep. like shit in there. No. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Yo, one of my rooms with the fog I had was the tunnel with the laser tunnel. Okay. That, um, uh, I can't remember who I got that from. But I remember, um, actually, I think I got that from another home haunter that made it. And this was before the foggy fog, everything got theirs. Cool. Um, that, that, so that was pretty cool. So one of my rooms, I just like this, the little like laser or fog going around and people would look like going in like a tunnel or look like going into like some kind of wormhole or something. And, uh, that was another room I had, uh, foggy fog in and people loved it. It was another room that came out pretty good. So. Very cool. So for all the home haunters out there, it's, Paying attention if you're thinking about doing it. You know, there's a lot on the table. You got money, you got time. It takes a lot of time to invest if you're doing it by yourself. Um, you know, you're going to have issues you're going to run into electrical, you know, lighting, fog machines not working, props not working. Uh, not if you're using other people, not getting enough people to do the stuff you need. I mean, there's going to be a lot of uh, issues. You know, coming up so uh just be aware you know the passion's got to be there or you'll burn out real quick <laughs> yeah. yeah and when, when it comes down to your cords make sure you're using thick cords not the house cords that's that's right. a biggie that's a biggie and make sure all your three pongs and everything are still connected and not broken off all that bull crap they, they look into that they look right they they, they they unplug it like okay it's good Fire it back in make sure everything's all good but, good, good advice there, Mike. I'm glad you brought that up. Definitely use a heavy duty outdoor cord. I mean, yeah, and don't plug a outlet into outlet. That's right. a big no no. Also, so yeah, there's there's all kinds of things to look at when it comes down to the electric stuff. So. What else do they look for? Uh, Let's see here. They, 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 well, the way how you wire it, like let's say you cannot have your loose wires just going straight across. Yeah. All your wires got to be zip tied or somehow stapled to the wood, no matter where it goes. 
Um, so all, so you can't have loose wires anywhere. Um, they look at any sheeting, uh, make sure that is um, everything that's flame retardant. Um, they look at the feet. Um, you have three feet everywhere. Um, they check that out. That's at a minimum three feet. Yeah, minimum three feet. Um, they check that out. Um, the fire exit signs, you got to make sure all those are working. And um, at the certain feet also, you like, like you can't have an exit at the beginning and another exit like halfway through the hot. Like there got to be a certain every other room kind of. Right. And they check that out pretty hardcore. And they check that out for the smoke alarms, fire, um, um, I'm brain fart. Fire exchange, um, exchange or whatever other things are called. Um, like they, they, they check out like a lot of things, but it is what it is. But they just want everybody to be safe. For sure. Right. And, and this is for home hunters that want like an actual haunted house type setting in like their backyard or their front yard. I mean, it doesn't apply to like it, like Jim was saying. Yeah. If somebody just walks up your driveway and grabs a candy out of the bowl and gets a boo and. That's it, you know. If there's, you know, there's. We're talking like the the actual extreme home haunters yeah. that want to go all out. Yeah, that's like, like if if you do just do something in your backyard, black plastic, or something like that with open roof, I you'd be fine. You'd be all you'd be all right. It just have fun with it and. Yeah, just like you said, with the, if you do one with the camo netting, you cut all that fire coat oh, stuff yeah. almost out completely, just about. And watch out for your lighting also. Make sure your walls or low walps on your um, lights. Like you can't have like a floodlight, like right next to a sheet or something. Like that's that, that's not gonna fly also. I'm just gonna catch on fire, get it yeah. hot. Mm. Yeah, and that's the other thing. If, if you do any lighting, make sure, like I say, make sure you go with a, nothing but LEDs or pen lights or something. Cause if you do a floodlight there, that's not gonna fly. Oh, LEDs are definitely the way to go. Not only from a safety perspective, but from a power consumption perspective, um, oh, yeah. a lot more energy efficient. Your electric bill is not going to be nearly as high as if you use a big floodlight. Mm -hmm. um, and really a general rule of thumb is um, the safer you make your home haunt, the less the chance of being sued. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> yep. So, and I, I wish because back in the day I, I had the floodlights and I, I was taking a big risk. And those things got really hot. And um, I wish that I had my own pen lights or even had some LEDs at that time. But at that time, there was no LEDs or any of that stuff. Yeah, so. they didn't even have them created by yeah. back then. So I, uh, now and now we got our own like LED pen lights and all kinds, all, all kinds of stuff now. So I feel a bit more safer when I am do my home hunt now. So it's kind of it's, – it's there. I might think – I've been thinking about pretty hard doing it again, so – I think it'd be pretty better and easier to do it this time around, I think. Because you got all, you know, LED lights are there. You more There's more stuff out there that, you know, you can easy to get away with, I guess, now than what you had in the past. So. Well, that's a lot of, a lot of great advice on this episode, um, especially if you're a home haunter. Think about, I mean, Mike knows what he's talking about. He's been doing this for a long time. Uh, pay attention. The big thing, and we can't stress this enough, is fire codes and the fire marshal. Make friends with the fire marshal, but also yeah. don't don't cut corners because he's going to catch you. Yep. Um, and you want to be as safe as it can and as fun as it can for everybody. Um, so... If you have any other questions about home haunting, Mike, how can they? Uh, how can all viewers, listeners, get in touch with you? Uh, I'm on Facebook as Mike Newsom, or you can find me on Instagram as Mike Newsom, eighty five, or just email me, Mike Newsom eighty five at gmail. There you go. There's a man you can talk to if you're ready to 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 venture into the world of haunting at your home. Uh, and if not, uh, pass it on to somebody who might be interested. Donnie, do you have any last words? Uh, no, I just want to thank Mike for coming on with us again and dropping some knowledge. You know, like I said, he, he said he started out, you know, being a little kid running down the sidewalk, scared for his life. And he's turned into probably one of the 
you know, the top haunt actors in the Midwest, in my opinion. And, you know, his passion for haunting is also one of the, one of the things that drew me in just, you know, feeling his energy and his love for haunting and, and home haunts and the business in general is what got me excited about it. And then that's how I found out, you know, how much fun it is. And, you know, that feeling like when you get that scare, like he mentioned that, that adrenaline rush you get from it, you know, that mm -hmm. was all because of Mike and doing his home haunt. So, you know, I'm basically sitting here doing this po podcast because Mike had a passion for haunting and built a home haunt. And that's how I got started. So, you know, kudos to him. And yeah, definitely he's, he knows what he's talking about as, you know, as, as well as Jim himself. And uh, so, yeah, anytime you guys need some questions, reach out to them. You know, if you got some wrestling questions, you know, hit me up. But, <laughs> like, you know, if it comes to haunting, they'd be the better ones to get, you know. I mean, I know, I know about haunting, but I'm not as well versed as they are by any means. <laughs> Uh, if you uh, if anybody wants to reach out to me, it's meathookjim at gmail.com or my haunter email, which is haunter.incognito at gmail.com. There you go. Right on. All right. For Donnie Hoover and Mike Newsom, I am Meat Hook Jim. We are the Wrestle Horror Podcast. Thanks for watching and listening. Goodbye. Be sure to, be sure to subscribe, like, and review. Thank you, yes. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all, all of our social media outlets. Facebook.com backslash WrestleHorror. Instagram at WrestleHorror. Twitter at WrestleHorror. On our YouTube channel, the WrestleHorror channel. Also, you can find us at www.wrestlehorror.com. Oh,